there everybody welcome back to the channel this is jts wargaming and today we are going to paint some sons of horus uh vehicles for legions imperialis uh before i dive in i do want to give a massive shout out to all of my subs but particularly my channel members uh roland you rock uh but yeah so let's get right into this so to start everything off, um, I've gone ahead and primed all of the vehicles that I'm painting today, and then I airbrushed them uh, with a base coat of Sons of Horus Green. Now, this color in particular, uh, it does not cover well, uh, which was part of the reason why I decided to use an airbrush. And even still, since you have to thin it down a little bit to, to get it to flow properly, uh, it took me like two or three coats uh, to get nice solid coverage all over the, the minis. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of shading. And I'm going to use the Green Dark Deep Shade uh, from AK Interactive for this. Uh, this is essentially AK's response to uh, speed paints. Uh, it is a little bit different than most of the speed paints that you're used to, though. Uh, so let me shake this up. We'll get the painting, and I'll talk through how it works. All right, so here we go. So now the uh, deep shades from AK, they are a little bit thicker. Uh, than, say, like a Citadel Contrast or an Army Painter uh, speed paint. However, I find them to be way more translucent. And then, uh, because it's a little bit more viscous, but it has that slow drying time that speed paints do, you can actually move this around your model way easier um and kind of push it into your recesses uh way easier without having to worry about pulling as much now that is still a concern uh for this paint just like any speed paint you don't want it to dry in a fat blob because then you're gonna lose out on the transparent properties uh but because it's more translucent than, you know, your citadels and so forth, uh, there's a little bit less worry with that. Um, the potential downside, um, although I really like it, is that you may need more than one coat depending on, you know, what you're painting over. Uh, with these paints, I do like using them to, instead of using them over a pure, like, white or bone, um, I actually use them over uh, sort of a colored base coat. So with these already being teal, I'm now going over it with this green, and it will give us good shading without completely taking away uh, the teal from the highlights all right so here you can see with the uh green dark wash or not wash but uh shade applied uh we've got a much richer green tone and we've got some uh good definition down in all of the recesses of the miniature uh so now we're going to move on and i'm going to use contrast black legion and I'm going to go ahead and black out all of the weapons as well as the sponsons and the exhaust here on the back. Alright, so we're going straight from the pot here. Uh, we want to coat these black, so uh, we don't really need to thin this down. Now, you do want to be careful around the sponsons and kind of let the uh the recesses on the uh sponson ring kind of guide your brush so that you don't spill this over onto the uh bits that we've already painted now when you get to the 
hull mounted and turret mounted weapons uh again you want to be very very careful that you don't spill this over onto the armor pleating um if you do happen to make a mistake you can go back and clean up with the the previous paints that we've used um, but just try to be as neat as you can to minimize that effort and if uh you weren't doing a ton of these uh, it might actually make sense to kind of leave these bits separate um, then you could either airbrush them or just kind of quickly paint them without having to worry about being messy. Um, and I kind of wish I did that, but then I'm also working in a batch of like 20 tanks. Uh, but we're just going to carry on and coat all of these and then we'll be ready for the next step. For the next step, we're going to go ahead and paint uh, some accent colors on some of the tanks so that I can differentiate uh, detachments of the same tanks from each other. So I've got two Sakarans down here and I'm going to do four uh, Kratos tanks. And with the Sons of Horus, a common accent color for them is black. So still using the black Templar, um, I'm going to go ahead and pick out some panels uh, on these tanks to unify them together as a detachment. So for the Sakaran, for example, I'm going to do this inner sidewall on the, the tank plating. And we're just going to go ahead and cover that with Black Legion and make sure you get any rivets that might be on those plates. And again, you want to be very careful that you keep this exactly where you want it. You don't want to have to do any rework. Uh, but this is a nice, easy way to uh, help tell your tanks apart on the, on the table. So for the uh, tanks that I did the unit, unit markings, rather, this is what they look like. Uh, so very easy to do, and we'll add some variation to your force. Uh, for the Kratos, all I did was the front armor bandings and then the sponson shrouds uh, on the back of the tank. And then again, for the Sakarans, it's just that side hull armor that's underneath uh, the reinforced plating. Uh, so now with all of that black out of the way, we're going to move on to the tracks. For the tracks, we're going to use scale 75 brown gray. Uh, now, in my previous uh, Solar Auxilia videos, I showed you guys how to do, you know, rusted tracks um, in the Russian 4BO uh, scheme. And then I also showed you how to do metallic tracks uh, when I painted the rest of my tanks. This time around, we're going to go for sort of a rubberized track that had been in a dusty, you know, urban environment. So this brown gray is actually the shadow tone uh, for my urban bases. Uh, you can check out that video up in the cards. So we're going to use this as the base uh, for the for the track pads um, to help tie them into. Uh, the bases that the rest of the army will have. Uh, now, this is fairly easy work. Uh, the paint has pretty good coverage, so you can get away with one coat, especially since we will hit this with a wash uh, later. Uh, the one thing you do want to be careful, though, is you want to make sure that you hit the sides of the track pads, and you want to be very careful so that you don't get this color onto your armor panels. So we've just got a couple more acrylic details to do before we can varnish our mini and get ready for the enamel washes. Uh, so next, any melt -a weapons uh, that you happen to have on your tanks for those barrel shrouds, I'm gonna go ahead and use Dwarven Gold from Scale 75's Metal and Alchemy range. And this paint has pretty good coverage. Um, 
can normally get away with one, maybe two coats. But so here on the uh, melted cannon here, we're just going to go ahead and coat that barrel shroud. And then optionally, if you wanted, you could hit the coils at the back of your uh, auto cannons. Um, I'm going to leave those uh black for now just to kind of differentiate my space marine vehicles from my solar auxilia ones but once you get all of these done we can move on to the next step all right so next up any bolt weapons we want to hit their barrels uh with a little bit of chrome just to help those stand out so take this cairn here and we're literally just running that right along the barrel just like that and then if you wanted to uh your ammo drums down here on the sponsons you can run either some silver or some gold paint in there uh, to color in the exposed shell casings as well. And for our final uh, acrylic step, we're going to dry brush the tank with this Dio uh, light metal uh, dry brush paint. Now, I've used this in some of my previous videos. Uh, it's a little more moist than a Citadel uh, dry paint. So you want to make sure that you get most of it off of your bristles on a paper towel because uh, we don't want this to streak across the model. We just want it to hit those fine edges. And I always recommend you do a load test on the back of your hand just so you can kind of see how much paint is on the brush. And now what we're going to do, we're going to focus on the weapons that are painted black, the exhaust, as well as the tops of the, the tracks so that we can hit the linkage sections. So we're just going to drag this very lightly across those surfaces. And so when we get to the tracks, you kind of want to go from front to back. And if we happen to scrape some of the armor, that's okay. It'll just look like chipping damage. Which is also kind of why we want to go from front to back. So that way, only sections of the tank that would have realistically, you know, come into contact with something, <clears throat> excuse me, are the only sections that are going to end up getting chipped. And make sure you hit the track links in the back of the tank as well so with that out of the way um if you wanted the shrouds on these giant auto cannons i forget what the the actual name of the gun is you can go ahead and reapply your black paint uh to black those out and separate them from the the rest of the gun and then if this is too bright for your liking you can uh go ahead and run a lighter shade of black contrast paint so i'm going to probably use basiliconum gray here uh but if you have the new known oil shade uh that would work as well uh for this sort of thing so just to demonstrate what that will look like we'll go ahead and handle this karen so just on the the barrels we'll just go ahead and apply that basiliconum gray you can already see right away uh, it's a lot less pigmented than our previous uh, black legion so you get those nice dry brush highlights though kind of showing through but they're not quite as bright just kind of tones that all back all right so once you're done with that, uh, you can go ahead um, and either gloss or satin coat 
the mini and this is a really great time if you're going to apply transfers to your tanks to go ahead and do that after you've gotten them varnished and then once you're done go ahead and satin coat it and then we'll come back and we'll do the final enamel steps and finish out our tanks all right so we applied some decals and then sealed those in with some gloss varnish uh, so now we are ready to wash the tank so uh, first up we're gonna wash the tracks with some ammo track wash so we're coming in straight from the pot with this and you just want to go ahead and cover all of the tracks if you get a little bit of this on your armor panels, that's okay. Uh, with this being, <coughs> excuse me, an enamel paint, it's super easy to uh, remove any mistakes uh, while the paint is still wet. So we're just going to go around and cover all of the tracks. And then we'll be ready for the next step. All right, so while we wait for the track wash to set and dry a little bit, we can move on to panel lining the rest of the tank. And now for that, we're going to use this Tamiya panel line uh, dark brown accent color. Uh, I think this works really, really well if you're trying to do a uh, tank that's operating in a dusty environment if you've seen some of my previous videos uh where i was using these enamel washes we were a lot more messy than what we're going to be today uh, we're going to try and be somewhat precise with where we're putting this so that we don't stain all of the the green armor uh, we just really want to run this into the recesses of the miniature and now there will still be some cleanup to do, uh, but since we're being a little bit more conservative, uh, it will be a little bit easier uh, to clean the tank once we're done. So you can go ahead and put little drops of this around your rivets and make sure you uh, run this into all of the recessed panel lines. And because of the capillary action it will flow very very nicely so you can really just touch this to a piece of detail and then just watch the science magic happen so i'm going to go around and do all of these panel lines and then we're going to wait for um, probably about 20 minutes or so uh, for all of the enamel paint to dry a little bit and then we can work on removing the excess all right so it's time to go ahead and clean up the the tanks uh so i've decanted a little bit of this artist uh mineral spirits into a little glass container got my paper towel and then some makeup sponges uh so we're just gonna go ahead and soak the makeup sponge and then we'll get a lot of that excess off on the paper towel and then what we want to do is make soft passes over the surface of the the tank so your first pass is really just going to put a little bit of that mineral spirits on the uh on the tank and after a few moments that'll help to reactivate the paint for you and you don't want to scrub too too hard uh it really doesn't take much effort just kind of make one pass all over the tank and then wait a few seconds and then you can come back in and do subsequent passes to remove as much or as little of this as you want so now that we've gone you know completely over the tank when we come back to the top here just wipes everything away from those flat panels leaving that color down in the recesses now when you come to the tracks we really only want to remove the wash from those raised uh, bits of the links so make sure that you're not pressing down you just want to drag this across 
and then we really only care about uh, the parts of the tracks that are showing. Uh, so you can leave the, the bottom of the track if you happen to paint it that. Uh, you can go ahead and leave that colored. And every so often, just make sure you get that excess paint off of your uh, makeup sponge. But just going to keep cleaning this tank. And then once we're all done, we're going to leave these enamel paints to cure uh, overnight. Then we'll give them a nice matte varnish coat. And then I'll come back. I'll show you what the miniatures look like. And uh, we'll do a couple of optional detailing steps at that point as well. All right. So here we are with the varnish applied. And I'd be more than happy to put this tank on the battlefield uh, as is. But we can do one optional step. Uh, just to add a little bit more realism uh, to the tank. And that is going to be to add some dusty weathering pigment uh, to the tracks and to the front of the tank. And so for that, we're going to use these AK liquid pigments. Uh, so I've got three colors here. There's brick dust, uh, rubble dust, and then just dust. So we're going to start out with the rubble dust. So after giving the bottle a good shake, uh, we're just going to take a synthetic brush, load it up, and then drop this onto the tracks to start out with. And so all this is is weathering pigment suspended in uh, thinner. There's no uh, binding you know, agent or anything. So you can move this around and clean it up kind of similar to a standard enamel paint. Uh, but they do have a little bit of pigment fixer in here. So once the pigment solution dries, the uh, pigment powder should be fixed in place. So when you put this on wet, it's kind of hard to see what the final effect will look like. So you just kind of have to trust the process and kind of let each layer dry before you decide whether or not you want to add more. Now this does dry fairly quickly, so once you have this down in place, within 5 to 10 minutes, uh, all of the liquid will evaporate and you'll be able to see uh, sort of the dusty effect of the pigment powder. So in addition to the tracks, we're also going to cover the front of the tank as well and this will naturally kind of run itself around any detail that might be present so we're going to move on to brick dust and we're going to apply that around the the wheels at the bottom of the sides of the tank and with this we don't have to wait for the previous layer to dry since we haven't hit these areas yet so what I found helpful is to just load up the brush, kind of dip it onto the model around that wheel, and let that pigment solution kind of run along the, uh, the recessed edge. Then I like to hit this front wheel section there, and then make sure you get the one at the back. And then just do the other side. All right, so a lot of that liquid has evaporated. So now you can kind of see uh, the dusty appearance of the, the rubble dust. And then down on the sides, we have that brick dust. And so now we're going to layer up some dust on top of the tracks. Now, I've found that this particular color uh, is somewhat weak. Uh, so you may need to do this in two layers, um, but make sure you give it a really good shake. And then just like the previous colors, we're going to load up the brush and then just drop this right into the recesses of the visible track sections. And so this will reactivate the pigment layer that we've already got. 
and then uh, allowed sort of the the pigments to intermingle and then also when they dry you'll get some separation as well uh, which gives you a really nice textured look and then once you're all done uh, so this one is the one that we just did that's still drying uh, but this one has been drying for a little while now and so you can see uh, that liquid pigment turns dusty and you've got some nice modulation of color along the tracks as well as on the the front of the tank then that nice dark dusty appearance down at the bottom of the hull all right so that's it for this video guys uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below uh, I, this one took me a little while to do. Uh, I had to build God knows how many tanks. It was probably close to 40. And then I only had enough painting handles to paint half of them. Um, so the next video, I'm not going to do the rest of the tanks. I have some uh, Legions Imperialis Knights that I'm probably going to do. Um, should be able to get that video out pretty quick. Uh, but... Until next time, Hobby Warriors, keep slaying that gray, and I will catch you in the next video. Mm -hmm.